In this demonstration, we're going to show you another mechanism for software token provisioning, one that we refer to as client pull. This involves the user visiting a self-service console in order to request a token. The self-service console can live in the DMZ, housed in an RSA application that we refer to as the RSA web tier. It can also live on the Authentication Manager primary on your internal network. The self-service console itself is customizable, such that you can change text and even the RSA logo in the corner. The first step in the process is, of course, logging into the console itself. In this example, we are going to use Active Directory credentials in order to have the user log in, but other mechanisms are possible, such as ODAs or even a different type of token. In this case, the user does not have a token, so they log in to request one. The landing page in the self-service console has all of the profile information for that user. They can do other things like change their PIN, troubleshoot for a lost token and get an emergency access code, but in this case, they're going to use it to request a brand new token. The types of tokens that users can request is controlled by you. In this case, I'm allowing both hardware and software tokens. The set of tokens available to be selected is controlled by you also. These software token profiles control things like the type of device the token is going on to. It also controls the provisioning mechanism and then also the behavior of the token itself. In this case, I've selected dynamic seed provisioning, which dynamically installs and creates the token when it is activated on the handset. Another part of the process involves the user creating his or her own PIN. This is very helpful in order to get them to remember the PIN. Another component is the justification for the request. This will be seen by approving administrators. Now the process is essentially complete. The user has requested the token, and as you can see, the confirmation number is 59U46Y. We'll check that later. If a user comes in and wants to review their outstanding requests, they can do that. This is good for audit and tracking purposes. As you can see, it's the same confirmation number as earlier, 59U46Y. Essentially, for the user, the request process is complete. At this stage, an automated email is sent to all of the administrators in the workflow. In this case, my workflow only involves one administrator. As stated earlier, an email is automatically triggered in order to alert the administrator that a new request is pending. I check the admin email, and as you can see, the message contains a confirmation number of 59U46Y. One or more administrators can be involved in this process, but as stated earlier, I am just using one administrator. This process necessitates the administrator visiting the RSA Security Console on the Authentication Manager appliance. A quick search of the Provisioning Requests page will yield an outstanding token request. And in this case, this is obviously the token that I just requested. Now the administrator has the opportunity to review the information about the request. They can even change certain attributes if they desire. Obviously, the outcome is that we want to approve this request, but we can do other actions as well, including a comment to the user. And now for the administrator, the process is complete. The system generates an automatic email sent to the end user, which contains details of how to activate and install the token. I will show you the content of the email and make a couple of notes about it. The end user checks the email and as you can see, a new request is approved message appears. The content of this email 
is completely customizable. Usually it will contain helpful information to guide the user in the installation and use of the token. In this example, I have elected to add a link to the Google Play Store, which is essentially the first start of the process for any user who wishes to install a token on their phone. The RSA Secure ID software token application must be installed on the headset prior to installing the token. The other part of the information is a specialized URL scheme that is specific to Android. This includes the MIME type that will launch the Secure ID token application when tapped in the email on the phone. Another component is referred to as the activation code. This is a one-time use code that is tied to the activation of this token. You can restrict this code to only being able to be used once. This will prevent others from perhaps shoulder surfing the email and going back and installing the token too. At this stage, we turn our attention to my handset. As you can see, I have a demo Android system running in my demo environment. And it's a matter of just simply clicking the link to the token activation URL. Because it's encoded with the correct MIME type, it launches the RSA Secure ID software token app automatically. During this process, it involves the connection of an SSL session to the token server. If you do not have a root signed certificate installed there, you will see this server certificate warning. It's a simple matter of just simply replacing this certificate. Once you accept this message, a set of forensic attributes are collected from the device and used as inputs into the dynamic generation of the token itself. Remember, no security information has actually transitioned from our token server to the end device. It's a cooperative exchange done during install time. At this stage, we have a complete software token ready to be used. Thank you for watching.